In the last video we saw, given a linear map F from Rn to Rm, how to associate a subspace in Rn, so in the domain of F, called its kernel, the kernel of F. This was the set of vectors that mapped to the origin under F. So this time we're going to look at uh, the target space Rm and write down a subspace there called the image of F. So the image of F, written im F, is defined to be the set of vectors B in Rm such that B equals F of V for some V. So I've been talking about maps in terms of you know following light rays and whatnot. And you can kind of think about the word image in this sense, right? So the image is going to be the shadow cast by your map. So for example, if your map was the vertical projection we've been looking at, so associated to this matrix A, which is one zero 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 one zero 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 zero. So in this case remember F of X, Y, Z is x y zero so what is the image of this linear map f well it's the x y plane right this is vertical projection onto the x y plane so the image of f equals the x y plane and that's precisely the shadow cast by this vertical projection why is that if we look at the definition well it's the set of all vectors x y 0 because those are precisely the ones that can be hit by x y z right so um so let's just go from the definition right the image is the set of vectors b such that b equals f of x y z in other words, it equals x, y, 0. So it's, it's exactly the set of vectors x, y, 0, so that is the x, y plane. Here's another example. So this was a, a matrix um, we looked at quite early on. It's uh, a 3 by 2 matrix, 1, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1. This defines as a linear map F from R2 to R3. In other words, I feed this guy a two vector x, y, and it gives me back a vector of height three, which is going to be uh, x plus y, two x, y. And when we analyze this map uh, previously, we, we drew this picture that I've got here. Um, where you see a plane sitting inside three dimensional space and this plane is exactly the image of A this plane is the set of three dimensional vectors of the form x plus y 2x y for some x and y for example to get this blue vector here 1 0 1 you take um, x equals 0 and y equals 1 Right, if you substitute x equals 0 and y equals 1 into this expression, you're going to get 1, 0, 1. Uh, if you want to get this red vector here, you have to substitute x equals 1, y equals 0. In other words, this guy is a of 1, 0, and this one is a of 0, 1. And anything in between, right, anything that is in this grey plane, is going to be a of x y for some x y so this point for example because it's three along in this direction and two up that's going to be uh, a of three two so this gray plane i've drawn is the set of all vectors of the form a of x y or f of x y So I want to make a few remarks, just like I did about sub 
the subspace which was the kernel so first of all 0 is in the image of f because 0 is f of 0 um, second remark if f is invertible then the image of f is the whole of Rm. This is because um, for any b in Rm, f inverse b satisfies uh, f of f inverse b equals f of f inverse of b which is b let's prove the lemma that the image is a subspace right I've been saying subspace but I haven't actually proved it what do we need to do? We need to show that if um, b1, b2 are in the image of f, then so is their sum. Well, if they're both in the image, then b1 is f of v1 and b2 is f of v2 for sum v1 and v2. And that means b1 plus b2 equals f of v1 plus f of v2 which equals f of v1 plus v2 because f is linear and that tells us that b1 plus b2 is in the image of f because it's of the form f of something similarly we need to prove uh, I'm going to a new page we need to prove that uh, lambda b1 is also in the image well this is lambda of f v1 and this is we can take the lambda inside because f is linear so this is f of lambda v1 and this tells us that lambda b1 is f of something so lambda b1 is in the image of f so as usual the properties of f being linear are exactly what we need to prove that the image of f is a subspace Now think about what we were talking about earlier with kernels in the last video. Um, we characterize the kernel in terms of solutions of simultaneous equations. Um, and I've suggestively, suggestively used the notation B for things that are in the image and that's because of the following uh, lemma. So AV equals B the system of simultaneous equations has a solution if and only if B is in the image of F what is F here F is the linear map F V equals A V and actually this is by definition right a v equals b has a solution if and only if there is a v such that a v equals b right i mean this is kind of a tautology uh, and that is precisely the condition that b is in the image of f um, so this is a this is kind of nice right we have uh the system of simultaneous equations a v equals b has a solution if and only if b is in the image and when it has a solution the space of solutions is a translate of the kernel um, so um, kernels and images are kind of nice for thinking about these simultaneous equations so in the last video we talked about the nullity of a matrix and that was the dimension of its kernel um, in what we're now going to introduce is the dimension of the image and that's called the rank so the rank 
of A or of the corresponding linear map is defined to be the dimension of the image of A. Right, so I'm going to blur the distinction between linear maps and matrices. It doesn't really matter, they kind of represent the same thing. And now there's a really nice uh, theorem called the rank nullity theorem which says that if A is an M by N matrix or you know if F is a linear map from Rn to Rm um, then the rank of A or the rank of F plus the nullity of A equals n. So n is the number of columns. Of A, or it's the dimension of the domain of the linear map. Okay, this is a really nice theorem. It tells you you only need to work out one of these two numbers, and you get the other one for free. Um, and uh, so I want to prove the theorem, but I also want to give you an example or a se sequence of examples that kind of illustrates this. So here's the sequence of examples first. Uh, suppose you just have this matrix 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like nine zeros. Okay, so three by three row, array of zeros. Uh, what's the rank of this matrix? Well, under this linear map, everything goes to the origin, everything goes to zero. So the image is just a single point, which is zero dimensional. So the rank, which is the dimension of the image, is zero. The nullity is the dimension of the, s the kernel of this matrix, the set of things that go to zero, and everything goes to zero. And it's a three by three matrix, so that's a three dimensional space of things getting mapped to the origin. So the nullity is three. And zero plus three is three, which is good because n is three, this is a three by three matrix. Next example, one zero 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 zero. What's the rank? Well, if you apply this to the vector x, y, z, you just get x, 0, 0. So the image is the x-axis. So the rank is 1. And the nullity, well, the nullity, remember, is the number of free variables. This is already in echelon form. So the number of free variables is 2. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So you see, as the rank increases, the nullity goes down, or as the nullity goes down, the rank increases, vice versa. Um, so next example, just make a bit of space. The next example is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. We've seen that the image of this is the xy plane, so the rank is 2. The nullity is the number of free variables. Well, there's two leading entries here, that, so that means there's one free variable, and 2 plus 1 is 3. And finally, the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. The rank is 3 because the image is everything. Right, any matrix is the identity times itself, so every matrix is in the image. And the nullity is zero because uh, what things map to the origin under the identity? Well, the origin does and nothing else. So it's just a zero dimensional space. So as you can see, you kind of, in this sequence of examples, as the rank goes up, the nullity goes down. As the nullity goes up, the rank goes down. That's what the rank nullity theorem is telling you. It's basically saying this map is taking Rn and it's doing something to it. What's it doing? It's crushing some dimensions down to a point. That's the nullity. And everything else it's mapping sort of faithfully into 
its image. So that means that you're, you're somehow using those n dimensions, sort of certain number of them are getting squished to a point and the rest contribute to the image. That's how you should think of what this theorem is saying. So here's the proof. Well, we know the nullity is the number of free variables when we pass to reduced echelon form. What we need to prove is that the rank is the number of leading in uh, leading uh, entries. in reduced echelon form. That's because every leading entry gives us a dependent variable and every non, you know, every um, column that doesn't have a leading entry in it gives us a free variable. So the total number of free plus leading is going to be the total number of columns. In other words, the total number of free variables plus the total number of dependent variables is the total number of variables, which is n. So this we've proved, this we need to prove. And together these imply the theorem because the total number of variables is n and it's also equal to the number of free plus the number of dependent variables. Okay, so what we really need to prove is this second statement that the rank is the number of leading entries. So first step, let's prove that the rank doesn't change when we do a row operation. Right, so let's suppose we have a matrix A and we perform a row operation, we get A prime. What we know is that there is some elementary matrix E such that A prime is E A. And actually this tells us immediately that the image of A prime and the image of A have the same dimension. Right, because E is invertible, all elementary matrices are invertible. So that tells us that the map B maps to EB is, I'm going to use this word because you'll see it in future if you haven't already, it's an isomorphism. Just means invertible linear map um, from the image of A to the image of A prime. In other words, if you take B in the image of A and you apply E to it, you get something in the image of A prime and it's invertible. So they have the same dimension. Let's say dim im A prime equals dim im A. So the rank doesn't change under row operations, so we may as well assume that A is in reduced echelon form. So without loss of generality, WLOG, assume A is in reduced echelon form. Now if A is in reduced echelon form, then it has a bunch of non-zero rows. Um, so let's say um, if A has k non-zero rows followed by all zero rows 
then two things. First of all, K is the number of leading entries. Because, you know, each non-zero row has a leading entry. And those are precisely the ones that have leading entries. Second of all, the system of equations AV equals B has a solution if and only if BK plus 1 equals BK plus 2 equals BM equals 0. Right, remember when we had put our equation into reduced echelon form, if A has a zero row, the corresponding row of B has to be zero. And if that's true for all the zero rows, then we have a solution. This was something we proved when we were talking about simultaneous equations a little while ago. So the image of A is precisely the set of B's for which those coefficients are zero. So it's the set of vectors B1 up to BK and then zero 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 and that's a k-dimensional space right that has k parameters b1 up to bk so the dimension of the image in other words the the rank of a is k which is the number of leading entries Okay, so that completes the proof of the rank nullity theorem.